Before the episode begins, time for a little bit of bragging. This is Series 9 of the podcast, and since it began in 2020, we've built up multiple thousands of listens and views. Now, just imagine if that audience were to hear your business or event sponsoring the episode, or even a whole series. Well, imagine no longer. Just check out the show notes for more details and how to get in touch. Welcome to the RG10 podcast, brought to you by the people behind RG10 magazine. The aim is to bring you interviews, information and entertainment. In fact, anything interesting that's relevant to living around here. It's December 2009. Gordon Brown is Prime Minister. The X Factor finalists featuring such stellar showbiz luminaries as Jedward and Arborfield's Daniel Johnson are number one in the pop charts. Massive dumps of snow have closed Sonning Bridge and the first edition of the RG10 magazine is dropping into the letterboxes of thousands of people in Twyford and Ruscombe. Fourteen years later and the magazine has gone from strength to strength and is celebrating its 100th edition. So for this episode of the podcast, I've twisted the arm of Nikki Ochman, the magazine's founder and editor, and persuaded her to be the one answering rather than asking the questions. I asked her what was running through her head when the first edition was about to go out. Well, once I got it off to print, I was really excited, but the lead-up to that was um, a very steep learning curve. Um, but I enjoyed all the you know writing up bits. It was the putting it together on in a cohesive manner on the page that I found a bit challenging so um, initially it was just me cobbling it together but hopefully it's a bit more professional in the last 12 years or so since I started using a a graphic designer. And what were your aims when you first started doing it to to conquer the world to conquer (laughs) RG10 what were they? Um, I well I've always been keen on supporting small local businesses and um, promoting themes such as shop local have been fairly consistent over the years um, and protecting the vulnerable society doing our bit to minimize our impact on the environment all of these themes I think are quite consistent in the magazine but I really just wanted to provide a vehicle for um, local clubs and societies to share their community news more widely across the villages and um, give businesses an affordable and effective way of showcasing what they do and reaching their target audience in um, you know, a way that they had been limited to them before. And how quickly did you kind of progress from thinking, OK, I'm, I'm dipping my toe in the water here, who knows what might happen to consistently producing um to consistently producing magazine you know every two months and thinking right this this could be the foreseeable future here (laughs) it started as a monthly (laughs) and i quite quickly realized i'm not going to manage this so i dropped to 10 issues a year and it was really a couple of years in i thought okay i got to start being more professional about this so i spent some money on um some professional branding and that's where the the sort of RG10 pointer blue logo came about, which we're still using today. Um, And about a year after that, I contracted out to a professional graphic designer for the first time. Um, It had been me putting it together before then um, with no design background. So that's when it sort of went up a level and we also went bi-monthly and started distributing across a much wider area than than all of RG10, whereas we started just with Triford and Ruscombe, adding Charville, and, um, and then eventually when we went bi-monthly in, I think, 2012, um, got, got the whole professional, you know, I realised actually this, this is a thing and it's going to stick around and I want to carry on doing it. So let's attract more business advertisers and make it more professional looking. And this isn't some massive team of hundreds behind the RG10 magazine. Nope. It is essentially... Just you doing everything. Yep. Maybe I'm a control freak. I'm not sure. I am notoriously bad at delegating. Um, no, I, I, I do have some help. Um, I mentioned I do use a graphic designer. Obviously, I don't print it, so there's a print company. 
Um, I have the wonderful Sue, who at least 10 years ago took over as distribution coordinator. Um, so the delivery side of the magazine um, is managed by her. We have a fantastic team of loyal delivery folk who, um, I think a couple of years ago, we rolled out a GPS tracking system. So again, that's gone up a level in professionalism because we were able to remap all the delivery rounds and minimise overlaps, gaps, close up gaps and reduce wastage um, and really reassure advertisers that, you know, it's a professional outfit. So are there any standout editions of the magazine that you can think of that, uh, you know, that you cast your mind back to and they really make you smile? Or that you're proud of, you know? I, th I think the one I'm probably proudest of and that sticks in my mind was the 10th anniversary issue. So that was the November, December 2019 edition. Um, it, it felt like quite a milestone, 10 years, and so I made a bit of a song and dance about it and got lots of testimonials in, which I shared in the magazine and gave myself a pat on the back, which is not what I normally do. <laughs> um, and also when I posted out the, the magazine to advertisers, that issue, they all got a little cardboard envelope with all sorts of goodies and thank yous in there as well for their support over the years. So. Yeah. And just in general, it, magazines aren't exactly, you know, they're not a thriving industry. It's, it's not a media that you would say were 10 years ago is something that's on the up. Um, how do you think you've managed to make a success of the RG10 magazine when so other, you know, big magazines around the country, around the world have fallen by the wayside? Well, I think community magazines have survived precisely because they are small and local and people care about where they live and you know they want to know what's on locally and they want to support their local businesses so actually and and covid has helped that actually because there, there was that return back to those sort of core values quite strongly through 2020 and beyond so actually it's not been difficult at all and print marketing has greater longevity um and engagement than digital marketing anyway. It's, you know, you can, there are stats surrounding that. So um, you're, if you're a business wanting to advertise, you will actually get greater return on your investment in a way, um, including print in your marketing strategy. Because if, if someone's looking at a magazine that's landed on their doormat, it's in their own time, in the comfort of their own home, they've chosen to do it, they're more likely to be engaged with what they're looking at and spend longer looking at it. You know, what we see on our screens is often very fleeting, we never see it again and we might think, oh, that's interesting and it's gone. <laughs> um, whereas I think in print, you're more likely to go back to something. And uh, the future then for the RG10 magazine, what are your hopes? Wow. Well, it would be nice to think it would still be around again and it, it, it still be around in another 10 years, but who knows? I'll have to get better at um, outsourcing, won't I? At delegating <laughs> and um, start focusing on, um, you know, the actual business and, and make it, you know, a proper living as opposed to a passion <laughs> hobby. <laughs> um, and um, none of us are getting any younger, so, you know, seeking out collaborations might be a good thing for the next few years. That was Nikki Ochman from the RG10 magazine. Thanks so much for listening to the RG10 podcast. As I said at the start of the episode, there are opportunities to sponsor the show. Check out the show notes to find out more. And if you've got any thoughts about who or what we can include in future episodes, then please do let us know via the rg10mag.com website or on any of our various social media channels. Goodbye. <laughs>